Welcome to the SimScale platform. In this tutorial, we will set up an incompressible turbulent fluid flow analysis through a glow valve. The SimScale platform is a very versatile CAE tool, and the focus of this tutorial lies in how the valve industry can leverage SimScale in order to make informed design decisions. To start with SimScale, just go through our website and click on the login button. Type in your login credentials and you're good to go. The first step in every analysis is to create a new project. We call this a globe valve analysis. After creating the new project, you can see in the workspace in the project overview that the project is completely empty. The first step is to upload the CAD model. In this case, we already extracted the fluid volume within the globe valve. In order to compute the fluid flow through this extracted volume, we have to generate a mesh for it. We do so by right-clicking on the CAT model and choose the Create New Mesh option. Within the new mesh, we can add a mesh operation. In this case, we will go with a hex-dominant mesh operation called Snappy Hex Mesh. The Snappy Hex Mesh operation is a very powerful tool. In this tutorial, we will see several options that you can use to further refine your mesh. The first step is to adjust the base mesh box. Next, we will add a cylinder. This cylinder will be used to create a region refinement. Having created the cylinder, we will move on to the mesh refinements. As I said, there are multiple options and operations that you can dynamically add to the Snappy Hex Mesh operation to further tune your mesh. Here we will add a surface refinement. This basically means that the surfaces that we choose for this refinement will have smaller cells in the, near the, these surfaces. Here we will simply add all the surfaces. The next refinement is the vol a volume refinement or a region refinement. For this refinement, we created the cylinder. And here you can see I refine to the level of 2 and add the cylinder to this refinement. To make it clear, this cylinder will be refined because we expect larger gradients um, of the velocity in the pressure field. As a third refinement, we will add some layers to the physical walls of the, of the valve and these are these faces. We will add them to this refinement and save this mesh refinement. As a last one, we will add a feature refinement. This basically means that the edges of the CAT model will be refined. Choose the level 1 and save it. Before we can start the operation, we have to tweak some global values of the operation. Here we adjust the the initial cell count of the base mesh box, then the number of cells that should be between each refinement level. Next is the location inside the mesh that the algorithm knows where to where the mesh shall be created and where not. And as a last one, at what kind of angles the layer extrusion shall stop. This concludes the definition of this mesh operation and we execute it on a two core machine. The job status in the lower left always keeps us updated about, this, about the progress of this operation. As soon as the mesh is fully computed, it gets visualized within the viewer. Now we can use some pre-processing operations to further review the mesh. Here we can see the layers that have been added. and We can use a mesh clip to have a look inside of the volume mesh. There we can zoom in and we can see all the layers that have been created to, to resolve the viscous boundary layer. In a more detailed analysis, we would probably make a more fine mesh or a finer mesh, but for this tutorial, that's sufficient. To simplify and accelerate the boundary condition assignment, there's a feature in SimScale that lets you create phase sets. Here you can see that we create a face set inlet, a face set outlet, and now with the invert selection method, the physical walls.
In order to set up the simulation, we switch to the simulation designer, hit the new simulation button, give a name to the simulation, and we're good to go. The first step in each simulation setup is the choice of the analysis type. Here we choose an incompressible simulation and with the detailed properties of being steady state and turbulent. Here we can see we have to choose the domain. As a domain, we use the mesh that we have just created. In general, for the simulation setup, just move down the navigator tree. All the red dots show that there you have to specify something more. And the green dots indicate that this part of the simulation setup is good to go for a simulation run. Here we set up the initial conditions of the, of the simulation for the turbulent kinetic energy K and the turbulence, turbulent dissipation epsilon. The next step is to set up the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions for this fluid flow analysis have to be defined for all physical variables, being the pressure, the velocity, the K, the turbulent kinetic energy, and the turbulent dissipation epsilon. Here we set up the pressure inlet boundary condition, being zero gradient. This also uh, ac accounts for the walls. The next step is the outlet pressure boundary condition being fixed value. Since we are incompressible, the absolute value of the pressure is not, um, is not important, so we just choose zero. Next are the velocity boundary conditions. For the inlet, we choose a fixed value of 0.5 meters per second inlet velocity. For the walls, we make a no slip condition, so being fixed value with 0, 0, 0. For the outlet velocity, we choose a zero gradient boundary condition. The next physical variable is the turbulent kinetic energy K. For the inlet, again, we choose a fixed value. At the walls, we will assign a wall function boundary condition. And for the outlet, we will choose an inlet-outlet boundary condition. Again, here you can see how defining topological entity sets, in this case inlet-outlet walls, really simplifies and, and accelerates your work on SimScale. So you don't have to use the viewer at all. Okay, K is fully defined, so we can move on to Epsilon. Epsilon inlet boundary condition for this incompressible case, again, fixed value assigning the same value as in the initial condition. And for the walls, we will choose a wall function. And for the outlet, again, we will choose an inlet-outlet boundary condition, again, using the same values as in the inlet. This concludes the boundary condition assignment, and we can move on to the numerics. The SimScale policy is that um, you should always have access to all the details of a simulation run. So here you can see plenty of numerical settings that you can adjust. In general, most of the time you can just leave them as they are because the default values are chosen intelligently. However, here we will tweak a little bit to the residual controls, which makes sense because we are running a steady state analysis and we will tweak a little bit the linear solver for the pressure field. We could tweak something at the schemes, but we just move on. On the simulation control, you assign the global values of the simulation. Since it's a, a steady state analysis, um, it's just um, we can just use some time steps, time step lengths of one and end time value of 500. I'll choose a two core machine and the maximum runtime, and then I'm good to go. To start the simulation, you create a simulation run on SimScale, which basically means that you make a snapshot of the simulation that you can start in the cloud. While the run is carried out in the cloud, the job status bar on the lower left always keeps us updated what's happening with this job. The residual convergence plot always is updated live, so you always can see what exactly your simulation run is doing. As the run proceeds, we can see that the residuals show a weird behavior after some time. So this might be due to transient effects that cannot be captured in this steady state simulation or maybe something with the mesh. 
So in a second run, we will try to get rid of these um, of this residual behavior and get a nicer convergence plot. This simulation took a, around 30 minutes on the two core machine, and we just computed the first 500 time steps. As we saw, the solution is not fully converged. So we will use the integrated post processor and to have a first look on the results. We will switch to the last time step being 500, choose the pressure to be visualized in the color field, and we rescale the whole color field to have a better visualization of the pressure. Now we can use different post-processing filters to further analyze and visualize the results that we generated. The SimScale workflow is kept very open, so you can use your own post-processing software if you, if you prefer that. Here we can see Paraview, so we downloaded the results, imported them into Paraview and using Paraview as a local post-processing system. Here we can see a streamlined visualization of the velocity field, or we can switch to a visualization of the pressure field inside of the valve. We now can use these insights into the fluid mechanical performance of, of the design to, to optimize the design in order to improve its performance. This concludes this tutorial on how to set up fluid mechanical analyses of valves on the SimScale platform. So thanks again for watching and happy simulating with SimScale.